Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go some of the main newspapers here in Spain as we have been doing over the last few days. We'll look at El Mundo, El País, we'll have a look at RTVE, we'll have a look at El Confidencial, and we might have a look at another one as well, depending on time. And then at the end of the video, we'll go through some of the comments and check out what is happening in the comments section. Now let's get straight into the news and we'll go to El Mundo today. We didn't use El Mundo the other day because they were obsessed by Lionel Messi's football contract. But as we can see here now, Lionel Messi is nowhere to be seen here today in El Mundo. Now we'll have a look at this first one here on the left. Ia, no supimos ver lo que venía con el COVID, pero ojalá hubiese más Fernando Simón. So Mr. Ia, the former health minister, now candidate in Catalonia, saying that we had no idea what COVID was going to bring, but I wish there were more Fernando Simons. So Mr. Ia, no doubt being quizzed for his role during the pandemic as the health minister here in Spain. As I just mentioned, he is now the candidate for the Socialist Party in the Catalonian elections that are scheduled to take place on the 14th of this month. And he's on the front foot there saying that he had no idea what COVID was going to bring to Spain, but he wishes that there were more people like Fernando Simón to deal with the health crisis here in Spain. Now, as we know, Mr. Simón is a bit of a controversial character, and there's quite a few people around the country that wouldn't mind seeing him resign at the moment. There's and tired of him getting up in front of the cameras every day and often reading out misleading information. We saw how people like Mr. Simon got the pandemic here in Spain wrong from day one, saying things like we weren't going to have anything more than a few cases. And Mr. Simon has made various mistakes and stuff ups over the last 12 months. But according to Mr. Ia, he wishes that there were more people like that. Now we'll go back into El Mundo and we'll click on this article here on the right and see what they're going on about here. El gobierno se niega a hacer público el informe del Consejo de Estado crítico con su ley de gestión de los fondos de la UE. So the government refuses to make public a report from the Council of State critical of its law on the management of EU funds. And we can see in the by headline, El PP acusa a Pedro Sánchez de haber ocultado ese dictamen porque cuestiona el procedimiento para el reparto de ayudas europeas. So the PP accuses Pedro Sánchez of having hidden that report because it questions the procedure for the distribution of European aid. So the government refusing to make public a report that criticizes the way they spend that European aid money. Again, the government being questioned when it comes to transparency, not the first time. There's been various cases over the last 12 months of the government not being very transparent, not telling people what they need to know. And of course, people now asking the question, where is that European aid money being spent? Is it going where it needs to be going? Or is it going on the social policies of the Socialist and Podemos coalition? That's the question. And of course, we see the opposition party questioning Mr. Sanchez as to where that money is going. Now we'll leave El Mundo now and we'll go to El Pais. We'll click on that, see what's happening there. And we'll click on this article here about the European Central Bank. And the headline is, España es el país del euro que menos gastó el año pasado para hacer frente a la crisis, según la BCE. El organismo calcula que las ayudas españolas del 1,3% del PIB frente a la media de la zona euro del 4%, pero economía eleva la factura al 5,5%. So Spain is the country in the Eurozone that spent the least amount of money last year in order to face the crisis, according to the European Central Bank. The ECB calculates that Spanish aid was only 1.3% of GDP, compared to the average around the Eurozone of 4%, but the economy ministry raises that amount to 5.5% of GDP. So again, another article, this time from El País, questioning whether the government is spending enough in order to deal with the crisis here in Spain. According to the ECB, as we saw, only 1.3% of GDP, but the government says that it's around 55 Who's telling the truth? We saw yesterday that Podemos was trying to push the government to spend more money, and the economy ministry said that there was some ideas on the table. Some aid package plans were being discussed, but they said that they weren't viable. So again, where is the money going if it's not going to companies in need? That's the question. Now we'll leave El País and we'll go to El Confidencial. We'll see what's happening there. We'll have a look at the health data here. We'll have a look at a couple of the autonomous communities to see what the health situation is. We'll start with the Valencian community, and we can see that they're sitting at 1,382 cases in the last 14 days per 100,000 inhabitants. Andalusia is now up to 930 cases, and the Canary Islands still the least affected part of Spain with 180 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. And we can see on the right that the graph seems to have reached its peak and case numbers are on the way down. So some good news there. 
We'll see what the main news story is in El Confidencial. And again, they're talking about that report that the government doesn't want people to know about. And just below that, we'll click on this article about tourism. And we can see here that España perdió 72 mil millones en 2020 por el parón del turismo internacional. La dependencia del turismo explica la magnitud de la crisis sufrida por España. El país perdió el 79% del gasto de los viajeros internacionales y eso a pesar de que el primer trimestre casi fue normal. So Spain lost 72 billion euros in 2020 because international tourism came to a halt and the dependence that Spain has on tourism explains the magnitude of the crisis suffered in Spain even though the first three months of 2020 were almost normal. So some huge numbers there lost, 72 billion euros in 2020. 2021 is unfortunately not looking much better. There was a little bit of optimism last week when the tourism minister came out and said that she expected national tourism because nine weeks is not enough to get the health situation under control. We also saw yesterday that the running of the Bulls Festival in Pamplona has been cancelled for this year and various other festivals around the country have also been cancelled or at least postponed. So 72 billion lost last year and who knows how much is going to be lost this year. Now we'll leave El Confidencial, we'll go to the state broadcaster, see what's happening there. And we can see the main story the state broadcaster is going with here. La vacuna de AstraZeneca reduce un 67% los contagios después de la primera dosis. So the AstraZeneca vaccine reduces contagion by 67% after the first dose. So that's some good news about that particular vaccine. I said yesterday that perhaps it was a little bit too early to tell what the exact effects of these vaccines are going to be. That will probably need to wait a little bit longer. But stories like this one, obviously quite positive. Now we'll go back into the news. We'll scroll down and see what else is happening. More news about tourism there in the middle. And we can also see this one about the big banks here in Spain. So we'll click on that. And we can see Resultados 2020. Los grandes bancos pierden 5,5 mil millones por el coronavirus. Y los primeros números rojos del Santander. So the big banks here in Spain reporting losses of over 5.5 billion because of the coronavirus and it's the first time that Santander enters in red numbers. So not good news for the big banks here in Spain but I'm always a little bit skeptical when I read stories like this and when it comes to yearly results for big companies here in Spain especially banks you often have to read between the lines. Now we'll leave the news there and we'll go into the comment section see what is happening there choose a few comments. We'll have a look at this one here from David. Sadly, the unemployment figures are only going to get worse as tourists, it seems, will not be able to make any trips this year. A big part of the cost of a holiday is now going to include the cost of the test prior to going to Spain and a two-week isolation on return to the UK. A very small number of people will be able to afford to take two weeks off work on return from a holiday. The test could be more than the flights. It is looking like international travel is only going to be possible for the very wealthy or retired people who don't take many trips abroad. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment. And unfortunately, you are most likely right. Unemployment numbers here in Spain are only going to get worse, I think, especially when we're talking about the tourist sector and other hospitality related industries. We saw in yesterday's video that a huge amount of jobs were lost in the month of January. And I don't think we're going to see too many jobs being created in the first six months of this year. And you're right, it's not easy to travel to Spain at the moment, having to have that PCR test and a quarantine on return. And I'm sure that not many people are willing to go through that process. However, and as somebody mentioned in the comment section the other day, there does seem to be a fair bit of pent up demand for travel to places like Spain at the moment, especially from the UK and other countries in the north of Europe. So we'll see if the health situation improves in the next few months, case numbers go down, stay down, and then the country can decide whether international tourism is a good idea or not for 2021. We'll have a look at this one here from Nick. Latest unemployment figures in Aotearoa, 4.9% down from 56 yeah, Nick, thanks for the comment and thanks for rubbing those unemployment figures down there in New Zealand in, especially when here in Spain unemployment figures are on the way up. But we all know that New Zealand is one of the best countries in the world when it comes to handling the coronavirus pandemic. They managed to shut the borders, virtually keep the virus out. And of course, you can see the results there in the economy. Now, I imagine New Zealand is going to start their vaccination plan with virtually zero cases in the country. They should be able to get their population immunized without the problems that we're going to have here in Spain. So as far as New Zealand goes, nothing but win-win. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.